while we're waiting for people to tune in, I would like to tell you uh, what I did yesterday. So yesterday I was a speaker at an offline event at um, in Miami, in Miami-Dade College. So Miami-Dade College is uh, one of the biggest colleges in the country, actually, not, not just in Miami, but in the country. I think it's like the second biggest college in the country. And they invited me to speak about the metaverse. If you don't know, guys, my recent venture, I am involved in Web3 and the metaverse and uh, currently working on um, the metaverse for education. So hopefully very soon, I think next month, I will invite you to have this community webinar, not on Zoom, but in the metaverse, in our metaverse that is called Techville. Um, yeah, so they invited me to speak about the metaverse and what it is, you know, for their students and alumni and friends and partners. Um, and uh, uh, to be honest, it was like really cool to be doing the event in person. And um, also, I was really uh, amazed that there were uh, a few people who were older, but they came to learn new things, right? They came to learn new things and they were taking notes and they were like, they wanted to learn new trends in order to, you know, maybe use them for their businesses, for example, because the topic was we were talking about the metaverse for business. Uh, but uh, the uh, why I started talking about this, uh, so the event was in person, but also it was online. It was a hybrid event. And uh, I was really happy to see some of uh, familiar names from our I think from my audience, from my community, because, uh, you know, uh, like, for example, from Miami Day College, I could see, uh, you know, a lot of names that are English names or uh, Spanish names because the, the population of Miami is uh, very much Latin American. But I also when I was looking um, on the screen, like, you know, the we were broadcasting on Zoom, I saw uh, some Cyrillic names. Uh, when I say Cyrillic, Cyrillic, Cyrillic names. Did I write that? Yeah, Cyrillic names. I mean, uh, Cyrillic names written in Cyrillics, like Natasha, Anna, uh, Genia, and so on and so forth. And I wanted to make a point here. Um, so now you are connected also on Zoom, and I can see that some of your names are written in Latin letters. Yeah, like. Vita, Olena, Katrina, Yelena, Risu, and so on and so forth. But some still have their names in Cyrillic. Um, I think that this is like, this should be like, um, like um, a Zoom etiquette or something. If you are learning English, it's probably because you um, interact with uh, English speakers. Yeah, like, or people who speak English, maybe not their first language, but the second language. Why don't you change your Zoom name uh, and write it in English? Because when you're going to have a call with uh, someone on Zoom and they won't be able to read your name because people don't understand your alphabet, right? The majority of people, I mean, you learn English in order to uh, speak to people who do not speak your native language, right? So I thought that it would be great if I, if you had your Zoom and your Telegram and uh, um, I don't know, maybe WhatsApp. So those messengers and those applications that you use to talk to uh, speakers of other languages in English, they may be English speakers or they may be German speakers, French, etc. But still, they will not be able to read your name in Cyrillics. Uh, they will be able to read your name in Latin letters. That is why my recommendation to be more, and especially if you use Zoom for work, um, it's a must, yeah, to change your name uh, from Cyrillic letters into Latin letters. What do you think about this? I like, you know, really like I had this, 
I had this thought yesterday while we were, uh, you know, preparing for the event and I saw people connecting on Zoom and I saw a lot of, you know, um, names in Cyrillics and I was like, yeah, this is great. However, for example, for my partner there, for the organizer, he couldn't understand anything. He was like, oh, we have some audience here. I was like, yeah, this is probably my audience. So I, I thought that it's, um, it's worth, you know, sharing with you. And like I said, if uh, you use Zoom or any other messengers or any applications for work, make sure your name uh, in these apps is in English, okay? And another thing, uh, since we, today we're talking about how to improve your spoken English and also you know, the most frequent question that I get from people is, Anna, how can I start thinking in English? Guys, this is how you start thinking in English. If your name on Zoom is not in English, like how, like, how are you going to think in English? If like every time you log into your Telegram, every time you log into your Zoom, you see only your native language yeah you see like only ukrainian for example uh and that's not good right so you have to switch it i hope it's only ukrainian by the way uh so this is why um i want you to switch your um devices first of all into english if you're learning english and also when uh, you use the apps you know change make sure your name make sure uh, like your description in these apps is in english this is very important this will also show that you you know you give you gave it a thought and it like if, if you use zoom for work it's also more professional because like why would i have my zoom in uh, ukrainian if i speak with people from around the globe okay uh, yes, guys, we will have the recording of this webinar. We always have recording of community webinars and the recording will be sent to your email afterwards, not today, but on Monday, probably, or Tuesday, my team will share the recording of the webinar to your email, the email that you use to register for today's webinar. So you will have it. Um, but in the meantime, uh, today I wanted to, I wanted us to speak about um, how to improve your spoken English. And uh, I, I think in the past month, um, you know, I, I did this challenge on YouTube where like every day I posted a new video and quite a few videos that I made in July were about, you know, improving speaking and some myth about like, you know, speaking and things like that. And so today I wanted to give you like a recap and also I wanted, but I would like to start with this, um, with the actually lesson, before I talk about, you know, like tips and tricks and things like that, I would like, I would like to actually start with uh, sharing tips and resources that can help you become a better English speaker. So let's start with that. Let me share my presentation. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And also today I want to, I want some of you who actually have um, access to microphones. I want you guys to chat with me as well. So I will be happy, like if you have an opportunity to unmute yourself and talk, let me know. You can share in the comments if you are down to chat with me today live during this webinar. Let me know in the comments if uh, you want to chat so that I know who I should ask. Nobody, nobody wants. Okay, nobody wants to chat with Anna. This is crazy. I thought you guys like me. <laughs> not that much, not that much. Okay, all right. So t tips and resources for speaking. First of all, um, I would like to remind you that you can practice English in two ways. I mean, you can practice speaking in two ways. Uh, by yourself, yes, by yourself. And you can also practice with others, of course. Most people think that um, you can 
practice, you have to practice with others. But I can uh, tell you that it's not only the only case, right? And in the it also like a lot of people think that they have no one to practice with. Again, this is if you think that you have to have like, I don't know, a designated person or a teacher, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is not exactly true. For example, here you are a community, right? Look, now we are over 90 people uh, being live, uh, wanting to improve English. How many people from this 90 people would want, for example, uh, to have a call, like 10 or 15 minute call uh, to chat more, like, you know, without me, for example. I'm pretty sure at least 10%, right? At least nine people from um, the crowd that is watching uh, this webinar now will want to have, um, you know, a call with each other and uh, speak English and like speak about various topics. So this is actually like when people tell me I've n I have nobody to speak to or to speak with to practice English with. This is uh, just an excuse. I hope you know the word excuse. You know, like excuse. Those are like those phrases that we pick uh, to um, to say why we don't do something. Right. For example, if you tell me I don't have time to do sports it's I don't have time it's just an excuse right you're just lazy you just haven't started doing this the same with practicing English please I created this community I'm just like a friendly reminder I created this community to serve you I didn't create this community for me I created this community for you so if you want to practice English and if you want to find someone to practice English with just send a message in our community chat in our telegram group and uh, I trust me, people will respond to this, right? So don't be strangers. Um, I mean, start acting on it. Also, don't uh, forget that you can practice by yourself. How does it happen? To be honest, this is what I do. I practice by myself. This is what I do when I record my videos. Um, yeah. And uh, you can do the same thing. The only thing that like you don't have to post those videos but I believe that when you record yourself on a video, you speak in English, uh, there are so many things that you benefit from. First of all, you get your uh, speaking practice. Second of all, you um, also become more confident because when you speak on the camera, first, like you're very insecure, you're not confident you know and like you know working with the camera helps you to be more confident in public so technically you're practicing public speaking here and i would highly recommend you do this like yeah like i said you don't need to post those videos anywhere you can just you know record it and then watch it and then you will see your progress as well for example when you record your first video and your 20th video for example you will see your progress you will you will see that you are more confident you um, carry yourself in a different way it's easier for you to talk about things it's easier for you to choose words your your intonation is different your pronunciation is different so you can create this challenge for yourself you know i'm actually very proud of myself because this is the end of the month and i did it so i was able to um, make one new video and post it on YouTube every day during 30 days. I mean, during the whole month, I didn't post on the weekend, um, on the only weekdays. You can do the same thing. Give yourself a challenge. Like, you know, on Monday, it's August 1st, make it your um, challenge month, right? Where you, uh, you know, uh, your challenge is to record a video of you speaking about something. And I will now tell you also where you can take the topics to talk about speaking about a particular topic every day, for example, for two minutes. And then in 30 days, uh, you will see your progress and you will see how your speaking changed, how the delivery changed. And uh, when people say that, oh, um, when I speak, I always forget words. Yeah, this is why you forget words, because you don't have enough practice. But imagine if you uh, practice speaking every day without anyone, just your phone, your camera, you talk about a particular topic, 
you will under you will see that it's easier for you now to choose words and you don't forget the words yeah you remember the words uh, because you get more practice um right i see that someone is asking me about the community chat so we have this community chat for English and English English and English for IT students. Let me see how I can share this. Uh, not sure. Okay, so I think so. My team helped me. Yeah. Okay, over there. Mm -hmm uh yep 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 okay let's go back to you guys see my screen yeah uh yeah the chat you can see it in the chat now uh right so this is this is how you can actually practice and i encourage you to try this uh because it will really work now i have another question in the chat what do you think about speaking apps oh yeah before i answer this question uh like i said if you want to practice with each other just leave a message in the community chat and see who wants to practice and then what you do your next step you either um, create a zoom link or you create a google meets link or you can have a call on telegram this is what you can do you can even like yeah you can even have a call on telegram or with the group for example or like i said the easiest for me would be creating a google calendar invitation and in google calendar invitation you automatically have a link to google meets and uh, then you can like as many people can join like two three four five six etc so that's that's uh, that's how you can do it but like i said also do not disregard the importance and the value of practicing by yourself without anyone now speaking about the speaking apps to be honest guys i am not a big fan of uh, uh, language learning apps um, and the reason why i'm not a big fan is that i believe those apps are very basic and if you are now watching this webinar you're probably more uh, on their like intermediate level and maybe even higher. I feel that for people who are intermediates and even pre-intermediates, mobile apps uh, it could be um, are, are a little bit basic. That's my opinion. I might be wrong, but I think like mobile apps for learning languages, they are uh, like a like a great add-on, like an addition to like your regular things to your regular to your like a regular practice i am um i think i like just you know doing activities in english daily and living your life in english daily i think it's much more um I don't know, like workable or something like that, right? Uh, because for example, you know, when I tell you make English your daily habit, and this is what I mean, uh, switch your devices into English, right? So you can see English every day or read one page of the book in English or listen five minutes of a podcast in English or audio book in English. Or uh, for example, if you... Um, in the in your work chat right ask people in english for example uh, inside my team of course uh, we uh, communicate in english and uh, but like we it's not like my team is not only english teachers right so some people they are not like super advanced in english but i still write messages in english you know this is also like for for them to be immersed in english so you can do the same thing if you uh if we talk about your family if uh, there are any family members uh, that also speak or learn english you can chat with them in english it can be only one message or two messages a day but every day and you will see that you slowly start thinking in english so i believe that those type of activities are better than apps if you if we talk about speaking apps to be honest i'm not i don't know a lot of speaking apps but like i said those speaking apps um they 
they are not going to do anything more for you than I just told you you can do by yourself without these apps, with the help of our community, where you can find a speaking body, uh, number one, and number two, speaking to yourself, because when you use a speaking app, there are activities where you need to repeat a sentence or ans answer the question or read the question, so you like, you talk to your phone technically, and when you record, like I told you, when you record yourself speaking about something, this is pretty much the same thing um yeah what about chat roulette uh chat roulette uh, are you talking about the app uh well what's what are you talking about um well i mean you can use like i mean seriously guys you can use things that really work for you as long as you can speak in english because I don't know about chat roulette. <laughs> I think chat roulette, you can, you can speak not only English. But anyway, uh, at English for IT, we are planning to have our own chat roulette where you will speak in English and also with the English teachers, not only with each other. So we are planning to have this uh, new thing for our community, for our students. So wait for it. Hopefully next month we can launch our first speaking uh speaking chat roulette and we'll see how it works now there's another question what do you think about bbc learning english like like i said bbc learning english this is another way to practice english um i personally used bbc learning english myself for my lessons um I, you know back in the day um it's british english so it wasn't my favorite but like i said every anything like okay so here's the here's a trick Pretty much anything will work if you work, okay? So like, I'm not gonna say that BBC English doesn't work. It will work if you work, if you do things actually, right? If you don't do anything, if you just ask questions, if you just consider things like, okay, maybe I will try this. Like if you're always in the state of like, I will do it, I will do it. It's, like, it's, it's not like, it's like, uh, uh, it's like your boyfriend who never proposes to you I will marry you yeah like uh, marry me right <laughs> so this is this is this the state that you have to leave the state right instead of planning start doing instead of um, doubting start believing in it you know and that's what you what you have to do. So the biggest problem is not the app. Andre uh, is say, says that any app never replaces uh, speaking live. I would probably disagree with you, Andre, because the world is moving to, forward, the world is changing, and people are different. For example, it's not going to work for you because maybe you are the older generation, but for people who are now 15 years old or 10 years old, it will totally work. So it really depends on the generation. It really depends on the background. It depends on what you uh, believe, believe in also. So like... Um, like I said, it might be right for some people. It might be not right for other people. Uh, it might be wrong for other people. But like I said, anything will technically work if you start doing this and if you believe in this. Of course, if you believe that, so for example, Andre, based on what you said, the app will never replace um, in-person conversation. If you don't believe in apps, apps will never work for you. So don't even try, don't even waste your time. This is, this, this is my feeling. If you believe that only in-person communication will help you improve your English, then let it be, it will happen. So look for in-person communication. And I just gave you a recommendation how you can find in-person communication. If you don't believe in apps, they're not gonna work for you. Um, <clears throat> right, okay. Uh, okay guys, so I prepared this like uh, lesson for you here. I wanted to do it together and I want to discuss this tweet. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of using tweets and other resources uh, from real world where you can learn the real English. So here's Gregory uh, talking about engineering managers. By the way, guys, how many of you watching this webinar, uh, how many of you are from uh, IT? Uh, you can raise your hand or you can just plus it in the, 
in, in the chat. How many are from IT? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Quite a few, quite a few. Great, okay. So you should know what we're talking about here in this tweet, actually. So this is what Gregory is saying. Um, engin engineering managers without dev background, yai or nai? Okay, so engineering managers is understandable, right? Um, dev background. Uh, in English, dev is short for, it's it's actually a contraction, yeah, ab ab abbreviation for development, development background. Um, yai or nai? Yai meaning yes, yeah, or no. That's that's very like slang and conversational style, like yai yeah or nai. I'm conflicted on this one. Now, this is a very cool phrase. I like it because here we use the word conflict, not as a noun, but as a verb. I am conflicted on this one. It means that I am not sure about this one. So there is a conflict inside of me about this opinion. And uh, there is another example how you can use the verb to conflict, yeah, to conflict. Uh, so for example, if you have a meeting at 12 and uh, I'm scheduling another meeting with you at 12 and you can tell me, and I'm sorry, I cannot make it. Um, um, the meetings are conflicting. Yeah, yeah. Your meeting is conflicting with my other meeting. So this is another way how you can use the word conflict in actually in communication when, when you know, talking about schedule. So I'm con conflicted on this one. Not sure about this one. As EM, and uh, what is EM, by the way? What's EM? What does this acronym mean? You can drop your answers in the chat, feel free. EM. Yeah, engineering manager, absolutely. Yeah, I was just gonna see if you were if you were attentive. So as EMs don't need to code, it should be possible. But in my career, I've never seen it working well. Um, again, I've never seen it working well. This is a good phrase to remember. Um, and uh, because like you will use this phrase frequently. And like if you remember this phrase as a phrase, you don't need to think about uh, grammar when you know composing the sentence and also you don't think you don't need to think about whether you should say work well or work good because in this in this sentence this is a very common mistake work good or work well you should say work well because you need to use adverbs so I've never seen it working well I've never seen something working well whenever I see pms or po's and PM, what does it stand for? And what does PO stand for? Yeah, product managers and product owners, very good. I see PMs and POs moving to EM role, they struggle. To struggle means to have difficulties, right? So here, technically the question is, um, should engineering managers have a development background or not? Is it important or not? Uh, and let's discuss, what do you, what do you guys think? Should or should they not? What do you think on this topic? If you want to speak up, uh, please uh, uh, raise your hand. I will unmute you. If you cannot say, if you cannot speak now, please express your opinion in written in the chat. What do you think uh, uh, on this topic? Okay, so who wants to speak up? Let me know, I'll bring you on stage. Anyone? I don't see any hands, I see uh, Hector. Hector, go ahead. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you Hector. Uh, well, I think it's important uh, that uh, your manager uh, have some experience with coding because well just developing our coding because uh, sometimes they're they don't understand or they can i i don't know how to measure the time you take to 
to do some work. So if they don't, they don't have the, the dev background or the coding experience, they easily uh, have mistakes with the timing. Thank you very much. Thank you for your opinion, Hector. Yeah, you can say there's a good phrase, uh, estimate. Yeah, it's hard to estimate the time or it's hard to give estimates uh, uh, on the project. Okay, thank you. I think Natalie wants to um, say something as Hello. well. Hi, Natalie. Hello, uh, I don't agree with my previous, with previous a guy speaker um, speaker, because... speaker not the guy speaker, speaker? okay okay so i'm sorry speaker uh i i don't agree because i know a lot of uh uh pf manager without uh dev background uh, and uh, it's a really good manager because project manager um um uh, his role uh, it should be more about communication between uh, uh uh, team uh, between the development team and the uh, uh, stakeholders and uh, if we know estimate some uh, difficult questions uh, we have uh, uh, special meetings meetings and the backend developers and from the develop developers and the designer for example uh, uh, we can discuss about it and uh, hmm. And estimate it, and uh, it will be noticed. Okay, that's thank all, you. That's all. <laughs> thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes it's really uh, you don't know like uh, you uh, how to finish your thought, right? So in this case, my recommendation, for example, when you're expressing your opinion and when you have already said everything you wanted to say, you can finish it by asking the question: What do you think? For example, you can say, what do you think? So like kind of giving, giving a way for another speaker to jump in the conversation and continue. So this would be my, this would be my way to wrap up my speech. I would say, what do you, what, and what, what do you think? Or like, how does it sound? <laughs> Okay, Natalie, I think there's Dennis and Vitali who don't agree with you, actually. Uh, but I love it. I love that we can have this heated debate. Uh, there is one thing that I wanted to highlight. Guys, if you remember when Natalie started speaking, she said, I don't agree with the, speak with the previous speaker. Let's make this phrase a little bit uh, softer. Because when you say I don't, for example, if um, in a conversation you want to disagree with someone and if you say, for example, if I say something and you're like, I don't agree with you. If for English speakers, it sounds quite straightforward. And also it may even sound aggressive if your intonation is very like, you know, strong. How can we make this face softer? Okay, uh, I like all in my viewpoint. <laughs> It's something I like all like these. Yeah, and Natalie should say it's a good. It's a good point, but um, yeah, it, you you can say that. You can still say I don't agree, but like you can say I don't exactly agree or I don't completely agree. So when you use words like completely, exactly, totally for negative sentences, they make your negation, your negative sentence softer so when you say i don't agree it's clear i don't exactly agree i don't completely agree it makes it uh, different so you can say i don't agree guys but like if you use those words to make it a little bit softer yes uh or you can say yeah you can say i partly agree yeah partly agree it means that some like i agree with some but like i have my own opinion yeah so i partly agree I don't completely agree. I don't totally agree. Um, yeah, and that's how you can say it. Uh, like I said, I don't agree. It's not that it's wrong, but if you want to sound a little bit softer and a little bit more like an native speaker, that's something to consider. Okay, anyone else would like to? Um, Oleksi, you wanna you wanna speak up? Yes, yes. Hello, small small ad addition from uh, my side. Yeah. When you when you use I partly agree or I disagree, you should describe why. So uh, if you say Always. I partly agree because 
blah 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 yeah all, 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 always yeah actually Alexi, thanks uh, for stepping up here and uh, that's a good point the thing is in english uh, we need we so english speakers they come from a culture where they use a lot of words yeah so it means that they like describe things in more detail than us for example and uh, uh, that is why whenever you express an opinion, for example, explain why you think so. Whether it's a good or bad, you need to explain why you think so. Whenever you give feedback, you have to explain why, again, you think so. For example, if you want to give me feedback about my webinar today, let's say you really like it, right? You need to explain in more detail what exactly you like, or if you didn't like something, again, Tell me that, Anna, this webinar was not what I expected because blah, 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 right? And you like explain what exactly you didn't like. This is how it is done in the English speaking world. That is why when, if you're working on improving your communication skills at the workplace, make sure you always ask yourself a question. You always ask yourself why. Whenever you say something, whenever you comment uh, on something, always ask yourself like why why did i say this because blah 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 and then like you explain you give more explanation actually this is a really good technique uh, guys for you to first of all become better communicators second of all improve your english because if you speak more if you write more in english you get better at english as well so that's my recommendation right so always say why why you think so okay um great uh, Alexa alexander is asking i'm not sure about it yeah actually i'm not sure about it it's going to be one of my favorite phrases to use when i don't agree with something or when i have a different opinion on something uh, in english it's a very common phrase i'm not sure about it and i know that not non-native english speakers don't really like this phrase because it is not really clear for other nationalities for other languages because for example in ukrainian when i say i don't um i'm not sure about it i mean that i mean I, it, it has a literal meaning like i i have some doubts I need to think, I need some time. But in English, for example, I'm not sure about it is used when you actually disagree or when you politely say no. Um, like, for example, if you ever, let's say, if you ever have the conversation when you wanna meet uh, someone and they say, I'm not sure, it means that no, they don't want to. They, they, they don't want to see you. <laughs> well, like, it's not like they don't want to see. You. Like maybe they can't uh, meet uh, with you on this this particular day. But I remember I uh, I like I, I was in the situation where when I was um, you know negotiating to meet with someone and they told me that I'm not sure about like you know this and that time and. Uh, I kept asking them, oh, can we meet then? Can we meet then? And like, to be honest, they didn't really want it to meet or like something was like, I don't know. And I didn't get it. You see, I did, it was many years ago, but like, I didn't get it because the person did not, did say, because the person said, I'm not sure I can make it, which actually politely meant I cannot make it. Um, all right. Okay, so Vitaly has, an, in, in my opinion, Engineering managers uh, need to know uh, what is uh, done under the hood of the project. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, this is this is a good opinion, but like, do you guys know the statistics of how many? What's the percentage of managers, engineering managers, that can actually code and that can't? That's actually a very interesting uh question what's the percentage of uh, managers engineering managers that can code and that cannot code what do you think is it 50 50 or like 70 30 what do you think the best em can code <laughs> don't discriminate dennis don't discriminate anyone else would like to raise a hand and talk about 
uh, engineering manager uh, as coders versus engineering managers, no coders. Hector thinks 70, 30, 70 coders and 30 non-coders. Is that what you mean? <laughs> Okay. All right. Right. Okay, guys. So um, we did this activity. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked it. I hope you like the topic. Um, wow. 30% coders and 70% non non-coders. Well, the thing is that uh, the reason why I brought this activity up is for you to uh, think about it as an activity that you can do on your own for your videos where you make videos you know of yourself speaking about something so what you can do guys you can just go on twitter um if you want you can just like follow me on twitter and just like choose a tweet and uh, read it first of all learn some interesting phrases or words or you know like highlight some interesting expressions and after this you can uh talk about what you think on the topic right so based on the tweet for example uh you can express your opinion about the topic and that's how you can learn to express your ideas and that's how you can learn to use like phrases i think i believe i'm not so sure i doubt that and things like that so that's my recommendation on the activity that you can do another uh useful resource that i would like to share with you is again for interviewing yourself and you can use these resources whenever you have a conversation with other people or when you are like i said practicing by yourself you can literally interview yourself uh so if you follow this website uh, let me share it with you here so that you can start practicing after this webinar don't wait for the presentation from me you can go if you go to this website guys you will find thousands 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 of hundreds uh questions on different topics that you can use as interview questions as like questions to interview yourself for example you pick a topic of like food and uh, you uh, you will see that there are a lot of questions about food and you read the question and you answer the question you read the question and you answer the question and that's how you do another thing that i recommend you do when you practice speaking by yourself is um, to time yourself for example around the timer well when you answer one of the questions uh from this list and uh time yourself for example one minute two minutes yeah and see like how many how many things uh, uh, you can say in one minute and in two minutes oh i would not recommend you uh, you know speaking longer than two minutes because like if you speak longer than two minutes then it becomes a monologue and uh, if you are practicing english for uh, for for conversation for you know speaking with other people uh, monologues are not great uh, in a conversation uh, when you have con a conversation with other people everyone should uh, speak uh, you know the same amount of time and i would say that two minutes if you can time yourself if you can speak for two minutes this is great you know for example if there is a question like what do you think about vegetarianism right two minutes express your opinion make sure you say what you want make sure you communicate at your point and move on to another question this is very important because in when you speak in real life with other people you will feel this timer inside of you when you have enough practice with the timer you will feel this timer inside of you and you will feel when you should stop you will feel when other people are getting bored with your uh, you know lengthy conversation because some people for some people it's difficult to speak for other people it's different it's difficult to stop speaking they just like non-stop talkers like me for example but anyway i'm i'm being a lecturer a lecturer here okay another uh i, I also um, um, decided to share with you the link for job interview questions if there are any of you who are now by the way is anyone preparing for a job interview in english or is everyone going through a job interview pro process now raise your hand or share in the chat 
this is this is a good resource for for you uh job interview questions so you can use this list of uh, i see olga here razor anna mm -hmm, katarina yeah so use this list of questions to uh train yourself uh, to answer job interview questions again you don't need anyone else you just use your camera not audio use camera use your camera answer the questions you know time yourself see how long it takes you to answer these questions and uh yeah go for it go for it um right so another recommendation that i would like to give you on how you can improve english and you probably heard it from me or you read it uh when i when i uh wrote about this in my telegram channel it's lunch club uh to be honest guys yesterday i had another meeting on lunch club uh with the um, his name was Ashish. He was from Los Angeles, entrepreneur from Los Angeles. And I can tell you that I decided to go back on lunch club and uh, uh, meet new people, meet new people. Lunch club is not a language app. Lunch club is uh, a uh, networking app. So on lunch club, uh, people who you're going to connect with are not going to be teachers. They're not going to be people uh you know looking to practice english they are people looking to meet other people but because the international language is english you will speak english with these people that is why i think lunch club is a great opportunity for you because you can kill two birds with one stone first of all you will practice english and look these meetings are 30 to 45 minutes so it's a solid 30 minute, 45 minute English speaking lesson for you. And second off, uh, you will be able to meet um, interesting people because the way Lunch Club works is that Lunch Club is uh, connects you with pe like their AI algorithm connects you with people who um, might be the people you're looking for. Like, so when you create your profile on Lunch Club, you, um, have to um, you know fill 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 out your profile and then based on the information that you provide lunch club will pick people for you to meet uh it's great so so the way i do it i um schedule one meeting every week so technically every week i meet one new person and uh we chat we see how we can align like last week for example i um, met a great person who is actually also working in uh, um, education in it and uh we are going to meet with him in person in august once he's back from from europe he happened to be also living in miami so yeah so technically my recommendation is when you uh register in lunch club and uh don't uh register with the city and the country where you live but instead put the name of the city and the country where you want to meet people from so that you know lunch club connects you with people not in your area but i mean not in your country but with people from the area that you want to meet them and i do have a link for you to register on lunch club uh let me see let me share it with you. Like with my link, uh, you can register on Lunch Club and I think get some points as well and skip the line. Yeah. Let me know if you have any questions so far. While, uh, while, while uh, okay, so you have the link. Thank you. Thank you. You have the link in the chat now. So just follow this link if you're not on Lunch Club. Register on Lunch Club and this is how you can... Um, <clears throat> meet new people you can have more than one meeting um a week you can have two meetings a week for example another application that i would like to recommend is the meetup app uh, the meetup app uh, is the app where people announce their events and meetups and again since a lot of events now online you can uh, 
um, join online events, for example, in New York that used to be offline, they are online. And again, practice speaking. One of my favorite um, meetups uh, uh, on this app is uh, the meetup for public speaking. Uh, it, it's called the Toast Masters. You probably know about them. They are all over the world. They were they they were even in Odessa in Ukraine. Toastmasters. Uh, this is a specific organization that helps people improve their public speaking skills, and they have their meetings uh, weekly where people can join and practice public speaking. Again, it's all free, and you can actually learn from experts from great experts and of course my recommendation is join our speaking club if you don't know i know that some some of you are new to, in the community here so you don't know every friday we have every friday and wednesday we have them twice a week now lean coffee speaking club this is a 90 minute speaking practice with our native speaking instructor and this speaking club is not just like a regular speaking club it's called lean speaking club club so if you are in IT if you know the lean and Kanban and agile um, you know project management style so this is this is the style that I took from lean meetings so the speaking club happens in the way that it's we don't tell you what to speak about but you pick the topic yourself and you decide with the group which topic you want to discuss it and it's not only one topic it's actually several topics during the whole 90 minutes so it's like so it's interesting because you speak about what you want to speak about not what your teacher wants you to speak about another cool thing about the speaking club is that you have of course error correction session because there is a mentor there is well we, we call we call it we call our teacher facilitator because the teacher does not like teach you anything it, he facilitates the the whole thing so the facilitator corrects your mistakes so it's not just speaking it's also learning from your mistakes and of course it's online and you can do it um, in the comfort of your home and hopefully next month we will try uh, to run this speaking club in the metaverse I'm really excited about that if you are interested so yeah you guys can join the um, the club um, um, here here we have like several packages you can you can just uh, pay um, every time you attend uh, or um, you can buy four classes like a monthly pass and um, yeah so um, if you want to join the speaking club join the speaking club to sum it up let's sum it up how we can practice um, speaking number one we can practice by ourselves recording ourselves talking about um you know expressing our opinion answering the questions use the resources that i shared with you uh number two find a speaking body in our community you are part of this community like i said almost 100 people watching this webinar live there are more than 100 people in our community reach out just don't be shy to send a message hey guys I want to practice speaking. Let's have a 15 minute call on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Here is a link, please join. That's all you need to do, really. That's all you need to do. You can share it in the chat, you know, in the tele on Telegram. You register on Lunch Club and start meeting interesting people from around the globe speak English with them and expand your network because network is number one thing that you need if you want to build a successful career. This is what people do in America, guys. Before they start looking for a job, they build network first so that they can find a better job or the best job. Check out Meetup app. See what kind of uh, what kind of events um, they offer there in English and uh, join the, these events some of the events on meetup are not just like you know um, networking it's also educational for example you can learn some design skills or i don't know like something else like coding boot camp they do this like they they have so, such like you know free classes there as well and uh, um if you would like to join other 
English variety students who are attending our speaking clubs with uh, our native speakers, Karuna and James, feel free to um, register for the upcoming speaking club on Wednesday or Friday next week and uh, try, you know, speaking English in a, in, you know, in a completely different way. And of course, most importantly, the most important thing, like, you know, there are so many ways how we can improve ourselves. The only thing that we need to do, the, the primary thing that we need to do is start acting, right? So you now have um, all the tools. Now your task is to actually start acting, start doing things and make it a habit, make it your daily habit. I'm ready for your questions and uh, we can wrap up the, this webinar. I'm ready for your questions, comments, or suggestions. You also feel free to suggest the topics for the next, uh, for the next session in August for the next webinar. If you want to ask a question and mute yourself, you can do so. If you want to ask a question in the chat, you can do so as well. Any questions? No questions? Well, the recording of this webinar will uh, uh, be sent to you next week, Monday, Tuesday, will be sent to the email that you used when you registered for this webinar. Okay, Hector has a question. I need a suggestion. Today, I understood every word you say. However, in my work with some people, it's hard for me to understand what they're talking. Well, I mean, to be honest, Hector, that's a solid question. I'm, I'm going to say that it's going to happen uh, with you uh, later on. It doesn't really matter on your level of English. Sometimes when I talk to people with my like, you know, level of English and my understanding, sometimes when I talk to some people, uh, it is more difficult for me to understand them than other people. It really, it doesn't depend on you. It, it depends on the uh, on that other person. We all have different, you know, style of converse speaking. We all have different accents. We all have different, I don't know, um, intonations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it, it will happen. It will happen in the future and it also doesn't really matter if they are native speakers or non-native speakers you can you will encounter this problem with the, all kinds of people because sometimes native speakers have really clear speech other times they have a very uh, unclear speech. Some non-native English speakers may be, again, speaking clearly. Others have really strong accents, for example, or like different intonation that doesn't like allow, that doesn't let you understand them easily. So in this case, I would say that if it's really hard for you to understand, like if you don't, if you didn't, didn't understand what they said, ask them to rephrase it, you know? And again, guys, it's not only you. Like, yeah, of course, we all need to practice. We all need to, um, you know, get better. But sometimes we just uh, think it's us all the time. But it's not us. It might be um, noise, you know, in the room, for example, when you talk with someone, that does, that's why you don't hear them. <clears throat> Okay, so Alexi has a tip. If you can't understand them, just say, could you repeat more slowly, please? I would like, uh, Alexi, that's a good point. I would just, uh, instead of repeat, I would say, can, could you say that again? slower please could you say that again the thing is repeat is not the most popular word uh, for this question. Can you say that again, please? Yeah, or come again. Native speakers say come again or can you say that again? Yeah. Yeah, guys, don't worry about it. Like I said, it's not your fault. However, you need to continue practicing. Why am I, why do I understand you much better than native speakers? Maybe you like me more. <laughs> Maybe you like me more and, uh, you know, our brain uh, understand things better if you like them. So I think that's the case, uh, Dennis. 
<laughs> yeah so and that's another thing by the way that's a good point uh, what what i just said um if we like something that we do we want to like we understand it better if we or, or we can do it better if we don't like something about what we do then it becomes even harder for us. That is why, for example, when you talk with someone at work and you don't understand them well and you become angry, you should not be angry because when you become angry, you um, your brain blocks uh, you even more. That is why, uh, even if you don't understand, try to like these people more. <laughs> you will understand them better no but this is really true like this is how psychology works. this is how I like our brain works you know like if it's really hard for us if we're not enjoying it uh, our brain starts blocking this action and we are not we we like we don't want to do this anymore that is why I want you to love and like every speaker of English that you interact with so that you start understanding them better yeah thank you very much uh thank you for great advice advice we don't say advices only advice of course guys my pleasure if you need my help you know where to find me i'm looking forward to the next webinar that we're going to have in august if you have any ideas on the topic feel free to uh, share your ideas with me you can share them in our community chat if you feel that okay so this is uh, what i want to practice with anna in august Feel free to give me some ideas because like, you know, I believe that these are the things that you need, but maybe you need something else. So please talk to me. Don't be um, strangers. And also when you uh, come and talk to people, this is, uh, this is also extra practice, extra communication practice for you because in uh, the native speaking world, for example, in the United States, people are more open, they're not shy, they're not afraid to come uh, and suggest something, to ask for things, to offer things. And I feel that in other cultures, uh, people are more reserved and more shy about this. That is why if you want to work well as part of American team, as part of like, I don't know, European team, but American team mostly, um, I want you to, you know, to practice that. And you can practice this with us in our community and with me thank you so much uh, i am really happy you enjoyed this webinar i enjoyed it as well now i'm looking forward to hear back from you to hear your stories from lunch club about people that you met on lunch club i will be really happy if you go um, create your profile on lunch club uh, schedule a meeting and see who lunch club wants you to meet who the universe wants you to meet and then you can uh, tell us the community and tell me what kind of people you met and how it went it's a really cool experience guys i really want you to try it uh, they don't pay me for this i mean they don't pay me for advertisement but I remember myself when I first uh, had a meeting on lunch club I was so nervous I didn't know what to talk about with these people I was like you know I was like what what will happen if I'm not if I don't have anything to say this awkward silence but you know like a few meet meetings in and I was like it was so cool it was so cool and great people all right uh, thank you guys I will um, see you soon have a good end of your day happy weekend by the way happy weekend um i hope you stay safe and uh, i hope uh, you uh, you can get some rest uh, during this weekend stay safe everyone bye